Welcome to the One a Day Painting Challenge. I'm Yvette, and in today's video, we're gonna paint this awesome painting. I'm gonna paint it live and show you step-by-step step everything I do and talk about all the tips and tricks of how I paint this painting. So I encourage you to paint along with me. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That way, it'll make it easier for you to find the videos in the future. Let's paint today and have some fun painting roses and leaves and all different kinds of flowers in a lot of different fun colors. Today I will be using a paper plate to make it easy so that way I don't have to clean anything up later. I can just put my paint on there and go. I am also going to be using paper towels to help dry and wick my brushes. I am going to be using some water to clean my brushes and I like to use a secondary source of water. I have my handy dandy pitcher. So I use this one right here for my dirty water and then after I've washed the brush I come back with my pitcher of clean water so that way I can get two really good rinses on my brush. There we go. Want to make sure that all of this is in the view of the camera so you can see everything that I'm doing. This is the paper that I will be using, multimedia paper. This is not a paid advertisement. I'm not making any money for any of these products. I'm just showing you what I like to uh, paint on so that way I don't get a lot of emails and posts and texts about asking me what I'm using. It's just easier for me to show you what I'm using and it saves me a lot of time later from having to answer the same question a million times. This is not a paid ad. But anyways, good paper. I like it. Try to find your stuff on sale if you can. I like the binding, this kind of binding. And then especially because it's perforated, it just, I don't know, makes things a lot prettier, easier to work with. I mean, this is annoying taking off these little sections right here, that's annoying. But, you know, part of the whole gig. All right, just got my little paper ready. Gonna take these little things and put them off to the side. Now the brushes I'm using today are these ones, again, not a paid advertisement. I'm not making any money for this. They're not paying me anything. Um, this is just to help me so that way I don't get a lot of emails and texts and everybody asking me and me having to respond to the same question a million times on what I'm using. But I'm using these multi-purpose medium, uh, these media brushes. Okay, so let's unbox these guys. They're brand new. I treated myself to new brushes today. I like to change, I don't know, I paint about three to four paintings a day. I like to buy my brushes in bulk and uh, when I get a good discount and whatnot. So I end up buying new brushes about every two to three months for me. Um, I am doing this professionally, so I do want to keep good brushes, but I also take good care of my brushes too. I put a lot of effort and energy into just making sure that they're nice and pretty, so that way I'm not throwing away money. So these are the ones I'm using. Okay, so again, not a paid advertisement, but these are the brands of paint that I'm painting with today. Just so that way I don't get a million emails asking me, well, what are you using? Because it gets annoying, let me tell you, answering the same question a million times. I've got some cool colors. I pretty much just got all the primary colors and then I got the secondary colors as well. A primary color are colors that are, um, okay, so like yellow, blue, and red are primary colors. Secondary colors are purple, green, and orange. They were all on sale, so that's what I got. And then to make things way easier on myself so I don't have to mix, I splurged and got some brown. Again, not a paid advertisement, just something I'm using today. I use a lot of different brands, actually. Tons of different ones. It really just depends on what I'm painting on and 
do I want to blend a lot or do I want it to be all abstracty? So it really just depends on that. All right, so here's the paint. I added, I bought floater medium this time um, just cause it was recommended and I figured why not? I'll splurge a little, it's all on sale. So uh, floater medium, this stuff is like an additive that helps the brush. It helps so that the paint can blend together. Um, I prefer that my paint dries really quickly. Now, a lot of people moan and groan and complain, but like, I don't know. I just, for me, I'm not trying to paint for three days. I'm trying to paint and have my painting done in like an hour, two hours, three. I mean, if I'm going into five hours here, and then I'm trying to sell my painting at the gallery. Like, I can't ask for like $2 million, right? So it's time and effort. And if I'm in a craft show or a flea market trying to hawk art, nobody's going to be paying me hundreds of dollars. So therefore, why do I want to spend 5 million hours painting when they're only going to give me like 20 bucks at the end of the day? Now, there is a difference between just painting to paint and painting to make money. Do not, I don't, paint to just make money. That's not my gig, I don't do that. But at the same time, I realize that if my paintings last me six hours and I'm all day, all day, all day, and then, you know, I can't keep every piece of art because if I do, I mean, I'm not gonna have any more wall space and I paint because I want to show beauty and put it out there in the world and, I absolutely love it when somebody takes one of my paintings home and puts it in their living room and it, it's a place of honor and it just, it makes me super happy. But if I'm like over here crying and crying and crying over a painting, then it's like, that's just a whole lot of stress and anxiety, right? So I try to go really fast. So because of that, I do want my paints to dry very quickly. That's why I don't do oils. However, if somebody's paying me for a commission, then most likely I usually do use oils and I will spend maybe a couple weeks on it because I mean these people are paying me like a grand to paint a portrait so of course I'm gonna put all this effort and everything but right now for what I'm doing is I'm not making any money on this or anything I'm just at the moment painting to have fun and have a good time and just hang out and everything so I'm not trying to paint my magnus opus right now so therefore that's why I am using this type of paint because it's going to dry super fast and it's going to get the job done. And this floating medium is going to allow the colors to blend, but it's also going to, I mean, it kind of keeps them moist a little bit longer. And if you need your paints to stay moist for like three hours, you probably could just spritz them with water. I mean, I've done that a million times myself sometimes. But also, you're going to see another thing, a trick that I do to keep my paints moist for as long as I need them. My whole deal is, I have my palette here. So I'm not going to dump out a gallon of paint on my palette. I'm only going to do a little bit at a time. Now, if I was painting a portrait that, like, uh, something like skin tones and stuff, and I needed a lot of blending and everything then maybe okay I'll dump out a whole bunch and have, that way I can come back to many different mixes of colors and everything but for this what I'm going to do here I'm going to try to stay in basic primary colors um so like I'm not going to need to do a lot of mixing so because since I'm going to do that then it's just going to be a little bit I mean I'm talking like a half a teaspoon at a time Okay, so it's little by little. I'm going to keep it in its jar, and then as I need it, I'm going to pour it. And by doing that, it also kind of helps the life of the moisture of the painting itself. Um, so I'm going to show you the color wheel just for a second because I know... Oh my goodness, and I can't even find it. I'm over here in the art studio trying to find my color wheel, and it's nowhere to be found. Ah. Oh, here we go. Okay, I got my color wheel. Remember, artists, try to be organized if you can. It'll make things a lot easier later. Okay, so here's the color wheel. Before I begin, 
I just want to take a quick moment here and explain a little bit. Um, now with my classes, I always try to do everything easy peasy as much as possible. And then I start easy. And then as I go and progress, I get harder and harder with the painting. So I show the beginners, okay, we'll do this. And then the, the intermediates and then the experts, I take it a step further. So just go with me to whatever part you're comfortable. If I'm going too much into like hardness and you're stressing out, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just let it be what it is. Don't stress. Just go until you're happy. Okay, so the color wheel. The primary colors are yellow, blue, and red. Now notice it creates a triangle, and there's like different shapes in the middle here. So we got red, blue, and orange, or excuse me, we have red, blue, and yellow, and that creates a triangle. Those are the primary colors. So when you're buying paint, I typically recommend, yes, buy the primary colors. And then the secondary colors are the colors that go in between of the primary colors. For example, here's a red, here's a yellow. Halfway between is orange. Get what I'm saying? So like the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue, halfway between red and blue is the color violet, purple. So... That's in the middle, so that means it's a secondary color. Now, between, we got, remember, the primary colors are red, red, yellow, and a blue. So if we have yellow and blue, halfway in the middle is green. So when you're buying your paint, I strongly recommend, this is what I do, is I buy red, yellow, blue, and then to say, I mean, you, uh, you can theoretically paint anything with these colors. However, to save time, effort, and stress, it's okay to splurge just a little bit and buy some orange, purple, and green. And there you got it. I mean, you can buy some extras and then you can get the aquas and go into a lot of details. You can get pink, but really, if you want pink, all you have to do is add white to red. So why waste your money? So, um, also, I always like to buy white, and then I didn't buy black on this one this time because I don't see myself using it, but I like to add to my mixture the white and black, and then, you know, brown just makes things a whole lot easier. So, you, I mean, you can mix them. I mean, the orange with the yellow, a tad bit of blue, you can get some good browns. But anyways, okay, enough with that art science. Let's go to the actual painting itself. Okay, so I'm going to show you why when earlier I was explaining about how not to waste paint and everything, but still have your paint last and be as moist for as long as possible. Here's how. So I'm going to add a tad bit of white. Oops, I need to open it here. Oh, fresh paint. is. <laughs> How pretty. I mean, this is like a nice happy Christmas gift for me. I just love it when I can open a new fresh bottle of paint. And I'm like the stingiest of the stingy people. Like, I buy paint and I'm really like at the end, like really trying to get the last little bit out of it. Um, so opening a new bottle for me is like a nice thing. <laughs> okay, so we got some white. Put that off to the side. Now look at how much I'm going to squirt out. Oh, another thing too. Um, typically, when I'm painting acrylics in all of my classes, I always put the white right here in the middle. And then I put the colors on the edge. This is to help me so I have a secondary ring for blending. However, this time I'm going to be a little bit different. I'm choosing to put just a little bit of white on this edge. And then I'm going to have some floater medium, which is the same thing. I need to take off the little thing on the top of the, the bottle here. Um, also, when you're buying your paint, I always like to make sure that the paint is fresh. Every once in some brands will put dates on their products so you can see when they were manufactured. I don't see it on this one, but there are some other brands that do that. And then also I like to 
open it and check it out in the store because it has happened to me where I bought paint that sat on the shelf forever and it was all dry when I got it home and I opened it. And then, well, obviously, you know, once it's opened, right, you can't return it and stuff. So take a moment. If it doesn't have this cap on it, do not buy it. It'll have dried out. It could have been tampered with. Just don't. Save yourself the headache and take a moment. So the reason why I chose to put my white here on the side is because I'm going to use this floater medium and I'm going to put it in the center. And so now it has its designated home as to where it's going to live. So that way it helps me in my brain when I'm going really fast and I don't accidentally pay attention. It just it already has its home. So I'm going to go ahead and paint a rose. Got to open this one. Probably should have done this before I started filming. Sorry. I wasn't thinking about that. Okay, I'm going to get a little knife here for a second. take the slightest littlest amount don't need a whole lot um let's see I'm going to make hmm should I put it to the right or the left for me I want to have the white in the in uh, hmm yeah I want the white in the inside of the roses so because of that I'm going to choose to put it on the left just a little okay look less is more and then remember to close your stuff. I mean, and I know, I understand that this all sounds really like dumb and like, yeah, yeah, we got it. But honestly, let me tell you, it's a nice, happy little reminder. Okay, here we go. Let's do some fun roses. I'm gonna make this this way. Now, okay, another reason I'm choosing to do paper today is so if I mess it up, whatever, it's a, pe it's a sheet of paper. This whole concept is just practice. So if you're practicing, use paper, all-purpose, uh, medium paper. Uh, this is a, what do they call it? It's the all-mixed-media pad paper. Yeah, so practice on paper. Once you feel that you are like super, you got it, you figured it out, it's okay. Then go ahead and move on to canvas, move on to wood and other things. But really, honestly, I painted like 50 roses before I even ever thought about putting one on a canvas. This will help you save money in the long run. Okay, let me move these off to the side just a little bit right there. Make sure I'm lined up in the camera. Okay, here we go, bravery test. So I'm gonna go here into my floating medium. Oh, oh geez, you know what? I feel dumb. I'm gonna wipe that off and get some water. Brand new brushes. I'm gonna dip it into the water a little bit to moisten the brushes. Now when you dip um, your brush into the water, um, don't be all killing your bristles, like a relax, let it happen. Just a little moist. And then I always like to bend it slightly. I always bend slightly to get the water off, but don't kill your brushes. Let your brushes last. You don't want to have to buy new brushes for every single painting. Okay, so now let's go back into the floating medium. Going to get a healthy little coat on both sides. I don't need a lot, okay? Notice how at the first I just took a little bit, pulled it over, get both sides covered nice pretty. Okay. So now there are tools that you can use. You don't have to use a paper towel. Uh, or excuse me. The You don't have to use a paper plate. There are things that you can use different palettes that'll help you. But in case you don't have one, because I understand they're like $30 online and the art stores are not selling them, you have to get it online. So because of that, I'm going to teach you how to not need to have to use it. And you can use a paper, paper plate. So here is the whole secret of the whole gist. If you don't get anything from me right now, this is the this is the moment of what makes the magic happen. 
everything else is blah and happy fun. But if you don't get this step right, then the rest of your painting is going to suck. Okay, so I decided that the inside of my rose is going to be white. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And I'm going to pick up some red. See how I did that right there? All nice and pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here, which really I should have done it in the middle. But I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to go back and forth. And I'm going to allow them to blend just ever so slightly. Maybe I feel like I need some more. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and a little bit of red. And I'm notice how I'm not letting them mix right here. Don't allow these ones to mix. Keep them separate. That's, that's a big issue that can affect you for later because then it's too much blending. You want blending, but you don't want too much. So I'm going to go back and forth until I get a nice little... Nice little blendy blend that is beautiful that I'm happy with. Load up my brush a little bit and back and forth. Notice how I've kept them separate. Okay, I still have a white section here and I still have a red section here. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to do just one. I'm going to do one gigantic rose. I'm going to start here and I'm going to wiggle up, wiggle down, wiggle up. Wiggle down, wiggle up, wiggle down, wiggle up, wiggle down. You could do as many wiggles as you want, honestly. Now, if you hate what you see, that's okay. Don't worry about it. We use this floating medium. And because we use that, we can go back over again and just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Do the wiggles. And see how it blended even more? The more I go over it, the more it's just going to blend. But at the same time, I do want to keep some areas of white. That's really important. Now, when we go on to the next layers of the rose, we want to overlap. If we make this whole entire petal red and we don't have any well, white in there, when we lap, overlap, when we go again, it's, it's just going to be a whole bunch of red and it's not going to have a lot of dynamics with it. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take this white. Take some red and I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to mix over here. Notice how I did not mix with the red and the white. I kept them pure and clean. And then I came over here. I am using an angular brush too, um, which I strongly, this is the brand that I'm using. I have done this a million times and please, if you want a good result, use an angular brush, meaning that your bristles are at an angle. It's a square brush, but up here they're kind of angled. You're going to get a way better result. Trust me, it's it's going to work out better. So just sometimes you got to spend a little extra money on the brush. It's just part of the whole deal. Okay, so I'm going to do another petal. Looking nice. It kind of dried out over here. That's okay. Go back over it one more time, maybe. Get a little bit more of a blendy blend. Now, I feel as though it's too dry. So, I'm going to have to go back into my, my uh, floater medium just a little bit. I'm just going to add that in. I'm going to come over here and blend a little bit more. Yeah, the floater medium, oh, magic, let me tell you, magic. Okay, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Now everybody's wiggles are going to be somewhat slightly different, okay? So, you know, you can make big ones, you can make little ones. Now the thing with the wiggle, what makes it so cool, is that by varying the height and how many wiggles you do, it really changes the look of the flower a whole bunch. So it's one basic idea, but then at the end of the day, it like it's a whole bunch of different kinds of flowers just because of the wiggles. And don't worry if you can't get this your first time, okay? I've been doing this for many years. I've tried all the different brands of paints, all the different brushes. I've I've been there, done it. It takes time, okay? So magic isn't just going to happen, like, all of a sudden. It takes a moment. So be patient with yourself. Give yourself some love. I'm going to need to bring over some more paint. There we go. Okay. 
And also these flowers don't, I mean, sometimes they happen super, super fast, but I'm over here trying to teach and explain it to you. So I'm going slow on purpose. And, you know, it takes a minute to build these things up. That's why painting is a joy to do because it takes a moment. It's not just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am kind of situation. You know, we want to have fun. We want to relax. It's our special time to just hang out and not have to deal with the stresses, anxieties of the world. Sometimes it's cool to give your petal a little bit of a different little look to it. Like right here, there's kind of a gap. That's totally cool when you have those. Now, it doesn't look like much right now, but trust me, when we get to the end, it'll have a little personality right there. Now, I usually also prefer to do the outside of the flower and then work my way in. You don't have to do that, but I found for me that I have better success. It looks cooler in the end of the day when I do it that way. So since it looks cooler, I just keep with it. It works. Now, if you didn't like this petal right here, you could always redo it again. Like right there. I'm not liking that. That's okay. We'll redo it again. And you can paint over it as many times. If, you know, until you get something that you're happy with, do it until you're happy. Okay, so now I'm going to put this off to the side for a quick moment, and I'm going to wash my brush. I want to give this a moment to dry before I go again. So this is where I put my dirty water, which is the first of it. I'm going to wash it. Now, if I had, if I was doing like abstract painting, then I would have, before I put in the water, I would have wiped off excess paint, and then I would have added it to the water. Um, but I hardly had any paint. It was, I could see it over here when I was painting. So because of that, I'm going to put it in my dirty water. Be careful that you don't kill your brushes. Don't, don't waste your money by killing brushes. So you can do maybe a slight bend on the bottom. Uh, I like to, a little bit of a bend to get out the excess water. Now, I used to not do this. I had many professors at the university tell me to do it. And I used to be like, I do it. I want, I'm not going to listen to you. But here we are, fast forward 10 years later, and I'm like, well, okay, I guess they had a point. So I'm going to go back into a secondary source of water, wash my brush again. I know, we got lazy, but this also, doing this method also ensures that your brush is clean because you're giving it a double rinse. And I don't know, it just saves you from running back and forth to the bathroom a million times to have to dump out your water. Oh, also, when you're painting with acrylic, well, pretty much any paints, but you know, you know me, I'm mostly acrylic here. Um, I always like to, uh, okay, so if it's like the summertime, I'll take my paint water, and I'm also a gardener as a hobby, and I will take my paint water and dump it on my weeds. And uh, that way I don't have to put it down the plumbing. Because if you're dumping paint down a sink, okay, one or two times, whatever, it's not going to hurt. But if you're like me and you're painting several paintings a day and you're really utilizing your plumbing, you don't want to kill your plumbing over the course of five years and then it gets all gunky and it gets all icky in there. So, uh, yeah, dump it on your weeds. Um, if you have to dump it down your sink, uh, then if you're going to do that, make sure you're diluting, like running the water while you're dumping, dumping it. I mean, it's almost kind of like the idea of dumping a whole lot of oil down your kitchen sink. You know, you're like, you're not supposed to do that, right? So don't do it with paint. But anyways, you see how I have my brush here and I'm pooling and then I turn and then I pull. There we go. Brush is all clean, ready to go. And do you see how I took a moment to clean my brush? Because I am so anal retentive of how I take care of my tools, literally this 
brush, most likely, if I continue to clean it like that always, I can see myself painting two to three paintings a day with this brush and it lasting me about three months because I take really good care of my brushes. So, okay. So now let's see if we've given enough time for this to dry. I can still see some shiny spots. So that means it's still wet wherever it's shiny. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a hairdryer. I use a hairdryer all the time. But I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now, I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. But what I'm going to do is change brushes. And I'm going to go into this smaller guy. Now, notice how he's angled. See that? That's called an angular brush. This is the brand I'm using. Once again, this is not a paid advertisement. They're not... Uh, paying me or giving me any money to advertise their stuff. The only reason I'm showing you this is so that way I don't get a million and one questions of, well, what products do you use? Because seriously, I mean, it's annoying having to answer the same question 30 times in an hour. So it's just easier if I do this one. Um, I use a lot of brushes, okay? So this is just one brush set I'm using now for this type of painting. Um, mostly the whole basic reason why was I was at the art store today and it was on sale and, um, and they look cute. They look all fancy and then they're angled. I was very adamant that I needed a brush that was square, but yet see how the edges here are not super square. It kind of comes to a point on one side. I find that using that type of a brush really helps out with this technique and this process. Um, versus just using a square. Now you could use a round, which is totally cool. But with this wiggle method, I find that squares make a better look at the end versus the round. The round is more for like daisies would make really good, good impressions with, uh, with putting two types of paint on the brush. Now I'm going to start again. I'm going to go back into my floater medium, which is this stuff. Okay. Floater medium makes floating colors easier. I'm going to, I'm still in the same colors. If I was changing colors, I would rotate and then pull out from here to the side and keep it clean. But I'm going to go over here. I'm going to tap. Oh, you know what? Oh, sorry. Party foul. Did it again. Okay. Since it's a brand new clean dry brush, I have to put it. Oops. You know what? I shouldn't have put it in my dirty water. Look at me go. I'm going to put it in my clean water. Get it moist so that way the, the fibers, these are synthetic. I recommend with acrylic, I prefer to use synthetic bristles over natural fibers. Um, they're cheaper. Uh, they're less cruelty free. Like, you know, they're not killing a hog. And, uh... There, see now they're nice and bendy and ready to go. Now I noticed with this brush, I have a little little one here. I'm just gonna pull it out. Sometimes you get these little tiny flyaways. Should really cut that with scissors, but this is practice, I'll let it go. If I was doing a professional painting and you get little flyaways, I do prefer to take a moment and cut them out. Okay, so now let's go here. I'm gonna go into my floating medium, just a little, okay? Just a little bit. I'm going to coat my bristles. Get them nice and coated. Don't need a whole lot. It's almost like adding conditioner to the brush. That's what it feels like. Okay. So this brush is a little bit smaller than these guys. I'm going to come in. And I want to keep it consistent with the inside of my petal being white and the outside of my petal being uh, red. So because of that, the bottom part that's not pointy, I'm going to take that white. See that? See how I got some? I'm going to dip into my red. And notice how I paid attention that when I did it, I pushed it in a way with the red that I did not contaminate and add any white paint to my red. Now I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to go back and forth a couple times and allow them to blend. However, I'm going to take a moment and be very particular that I'm not allowing the red to go too much into the white. And I'm not allowing the white to go too much into the red. Just a little bit back and forth 
so that I get a nice little blend on my brush, a little blend that I can see it's a pretty look, um, but yet I can still distinctly see white on one side of the brush and red on the other side of the brush. Now these ones are wet, so I'm gonna start here where it's dry, and I'm going to come back in a little bit, so we're working from the outside in, and I'm going to go and do my wiggly thing. It's going to look slightly different, and I might need some more puddles to get all the way around. Um, but I do want to keep some of that white. I don't want to go back over all of that area. Okay, so bravery test. Right there. And it doesn't matter. I did three, one, three of them here just because, and you can go back over it. You can go back over it many times until you get something you like and you're happy with it and it looks cool and you're like, yeah. Don't beat yourself up if the first time you ever do this, it sucks. I have painted this a million times. So be gentle with yourself. We're our own worst critics. I'm going to need a little bit more white on that. Okay, so I like that. Let's come over here and make another petal. I'm going to wiggle back and forth, going up and down, and I can do it as many times as I'm comfortable with the wiggles. I do also want it to make it look like several different patterns, several different um, petals is what I want. So I do want them to look a little disconnected. Ugh. That's okay. Just do her again. And take your time. There's no rush. I'm going to leave that. It's fine. Oh, they look like little hearts. Okay. Hmm. Now, if you are not using any kind of floater medium whatsoever and you notice that your paint is really dry and thick, get out some new fresh paint, spray it with a little hair, a uh, little spray bottle and moisten your paint. Um, the Buying the floating medium is the, like it was an extra like couple bucks today, but I'm finding that it's actually, it's saving me a headache. So because of that, it was actually a pretty good deal to just splurge a little bit. I'm going to go back into just a little bit of the floater medium. Every so often you do have to add more. Uh, you know what? Okay, here's a good example. I have added too much. Notice how my brush is a big blend of just pink. There's not really a white or a, white sec oh, or a red section. I'm going to go ahead and take a moment and clean my brush. Uh, I recommend doing this every so often. When you get stressed out and you put your wiggles too much and you go over many, many times, take a moment and just clean out your brush. This is fine. This, this works. Um, you could put it in water and clean it, but this for me is good right now. So I'm going to come over here. Instead of using that, I'm going to take over here from where there's a clean section. I'm going to kind of coat my brush just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to, instead of using this, I'm going to make a new one. We'll make a new one right here just because it's a smaller brush. And, you know, sometimes you just not need to start over fresh. So this is how I've loaded my brush. Do you see how they're not, they're kind of touching? Not really. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go back and forth. And now this is the part in which I allow them to blend and come together ever so slightly. Take your time, breathe. If you load your brush properly and you do a good job with it, your painting is going to come out way better. If you don't take the time to clean your brush and adequately load it the proper way and do everything good, then your painting's going to be cool, but it's, you know, it's not going to be as blendy, I guess. It's not going to, it might be a little too blendy, not blendy enough. So take your time. Enjoy the process. 
Be careful that you're dipping the right side of your brush into the right color so that way you're not getting mixture on your, pa your uh, palette. Make sure I'm still in the camera here. There we go. Oops. I almost had a happy accident right there. And when I'm going back and forth with these strokes, it really like kind of doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter, but like, it's not like I have to do it five times. Like I just do it until I'm happy that I've got a nice, cool little blend situation going on. Oh, I like that. That's good. I'm not going to go over that. That was cool. You know what, I have, so I basically for the most part have explained the gist of it. I'm going to continue for a minute here, but I'm going to put on, or I'm going to give us some quiet time to just hang out and relax. I'm going to shut up for a minute so we can just zen out and paint. Um, I'm going to turn on some Brady sounds just to have in the background. Now there are a lot of times when I paint that I like to have like a zen out session where I just kind of chill and just paint. So, come and zen out with me. Take a moment. Hang out with your buddies, chit-chat, or if you're alone, maybe you could use this time for helpful meditation, or like um, a little, sometimes I like to pray a little bit, or, or just zone out. Uh, it's up to you. Um, but yeah, so when I get finished after a little bit, I will come back and explain the next steps, but for the most part, take your time. Excuse me, it turned off. I'm sorry about that. I don't, notifications will be silenced while phone is locked. I don't know why it keeps shutting off. It's in my settings.
right, so from here, I'm going to show you how to continue the flower. We're going to do a cool middle. You can continue doing this pattern the whole way, and then it's a happy cool rose. It just has a bunch of petals. But I want to show you another way to make a little bit more oomph and a little bit more cooler rose. So I'm going to go here. Got my brush loaded pretty cool. Make sure you got a nice good load on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a big whoosh. Which actually I should probably change to a bigger one, but oh well. I'm going to do a. I'm gonna do. I need a little pebble. I'm gonna do a big swish. It's like an arc. I'm doing like a rainbow. The big arc. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back, load my brush again. I know it's a little bit of tediousness coming back and forth, loading the brush, but trust me, you need to do it, otherwise you don't get that cool effect. Okay, so I did this the, the rainbow. I'm going to come over here and do the same motion, just in the other direction. So I'm doing an arc, And it's going the opposite direction. So I did a, smi a frowny face first, and now I'm doing a smiley face. So it was a, sm uh, a frowny face, and then once you got what you like, then come back and do a smiley face. So now we need to make it look like it's not just floating in there. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a swoosh. It's all a series of swooshes. Swoosh. I'm going to swoosh in the other direction. Swoosh. Swoosh. So they're like commas. Alrighty then. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to clean my brush and switch to a smaller brush. Remember to pull across the paper towel, not push. I'm using the same style of brush, and it's a smaller. It's an angled brush, and it's smaller. So it's like a square, but the end, instead of being straight across, it's kind of cut at an angle. Make sure that you, since it's a fresh, clean, brand new brush, it's all dry, get it in the water, moisten up those bristles. Yep, very nice. Bend out some of that water. So now I'm going to go back into my floating medium. Get a nice coating, not too much, just enough to really coat it, to get nice in the bristles. This will help with the blending of the colors. Take some white and some red. I have like no more red. I have no more red. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start a new little path, a new little section here because I have a smaller brush. 
it blended way too much so I'm gonna have to bring over some more white because I had too much blending where it was just all red and not really what I want now it is a tad bit trickier with the smaller brush that's okay we're practicing I feel like I got too much of a blend so I'm gonna clean off my brush it wasn't ready it's okay these things happen Okay, so let me try this again. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's nice. Yep. Ooh, beautiful. So I'm going to do the same swooshies that I did, but this time I have a smaller brush. It does help if you rotate a little bit. fill in this space over here. I have this like random space that I don't like, so back over. They're all commas. Think of them as commas. And that's cool for this flower. It works. Okay. So that's how you do... I mean, it's a rose. It's a type of rose. There are many different types of roses. You can do the same thing with many different colors. You could do purples and blues. You could use do it on black paper. It's cool. Um, you could do this on wood. This is more of like a tropical flowery thing. Kind of like, the, uh, you know what? I'm thinking it's more, not so much uh, a rose as it's looking more like a hibiscus flower. Or well, a cross. Like a, a, a cross between the two if they had a baby. I'm going to show you over here how to make some leaves. So go ahead, wash your brush. Remember what kind of paper we're using for this. The mixed media paper. Again, they're not paying me for this. I'm just showing you. So that way I don't have like a lot of questions later and have to like spend all day answering the same question 50 million times. I always prefer to practice on paper before I move into pa onto painting on a canvas or a stone or whatever it is that I might be painting on. Alright, so now here's how we do leaves. I'm going to use my, my large brush just because it's the easiest to use. I have this one, large angular brush. I got fresh new paint. So I gotta open my little paint here.
I bought one that was already open. Ugh. I didn't check it. That annoys me. I hate that. Okay, so a little bit of green. Maybe a tad more. And a little bit of yellow. Okay, so I'm going to choose that the outside of the leaf is going to be green and the inside is going to be yellow. So therefore, to make it easier on myself, I'm going to add some yellow on the right side of the green versus adding it to the left. So now I've got this, it's still moist from when I cleaned it. So now I can go back into my floating medium. Get a nice coating on there. This is gonna help the, the paint so it can blend together. It's gonna make things way easier for blending. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow onto my brush and then I'm going to pick up some green over here, about equal quantities. And then I'm going to, in the middle here, I'm going to go back and forth and I'm going to allow them to blend a little bit and come together. Now I still want to keep an area where it's strictly green and I want an area that's yellow. So I still want to see the yellow, I still want to see the green. All right, so now that we have this loaded, let's do a leaf. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do random leaves. There's gonna be really no method to where they're going or what they're gonna be. I'm just gonna show you how to do a leaf. So I'm going to stamp it down and wiggle, 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 wiggle back and forth however many times. And then kind of pull up. That's cool, huh? Then I'm going to rotate. Make sure I load my brush again back and forth. Back and forth. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to stamp it down. And I'm going to pull up, out, in, out, in many times repeatedly. feel like I got too much green. If this happens to you, pick up some more yellow. And let's do this again. I always paint over what we don't like. feel like it's not... I'm going to add some little floating medium over here. I feel like my paint kind of got dry there for a second. So now that I have my leaf, if I wanted to, I can use a liner brush. A liner brush are the brushes that look like this. Have a nice pretty point at the end of the brush. You can use that to make the middle part of the leaf. I'm going to just be lazy and use my brush. And I'm going to pull a line. Yeah. Need to load it. There we go. And I'm just going to pull a line in the middle. And there you go. The middle part of the leaf. Now I'm going to show you a different kind of leaf. I mean, really, honestly, the only difference is, is how many wiggles you're using. Now there are these kind of leaves that come like 
down. Okay, so I've got like this is the stem. I got a little bit of green in there. Okay, and then like we want to have it like it's bent. So the like leaf part is bent. We're going to come here and we're going to swoop down and kind of turn and rotate ever so slightly. And this is like a leaf. It really should come to a point. I don't have enough floaty medium. So do you get it? So this is like the stem and then this is the leaf that's coming off. And then if I was to have like my flower here, it would be a big line and the flower would be up here. So that's one type. So let's do this again. And now this, I'm going to, okay, we're going to, how about we do a four leaf clover on this one? So it's just really one bump. Notice how when I'm doing it, it's the same as when we were doing the rows. The only difference is instead of me trying to wiggle back and forth a million times, I'm just going to do one bump at a time. I'm going to start down, I'm going to pull up, and come back down. So it's a swoosh. So it's almost like I'm making a heart. So we've got a three leaf clover going on right now. And now we're going to do a four leaf clover. So I'm just going to worry about one little bump. And then I'm going to come back and do another bump. That's cool. And then to make the little stem, right there. There you got it. Look, this leaf is hideous. It's absolutely hideous. Let's get rid of it or do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again. There we go. If you don't like something, you can always paint over it. Just paint. 
And then we're going to do the stem. Now I loaded my brush just like I'm always loading my brush. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to pull it out. And there. Different kind of a leaf. Now let's see if we want to make our leaf a little bit pointy. Ugh, I'm all out of floating medium. Notice how instead of coming around in a circle, I'm kind of going up with it. You see that? How these ones, I went around, around, right? Well, this one, I wiggled it, but I kind of went long. Like if I painted this with brown, it would look like a piece of poop. So it's gotta be kind of long. So now I'm gonna turn it. Now I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to keep it long, and I'm going to wiggle, but I'm not really going to turn as I'm doing it. Any more float or medium I'm running out here ah. it's okay we'll go to the other side and we'll just fix it just paint okay well you got the gist right I mean, I can go and make it all pretty, but you get the gist. So we just did the same thing, we made it long. So now what we're gonna do is go back and give it a stem. So I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna kinda curve my stem to be fun. See that? I kinda gave it a little bit of a curve. So there you go. If you leave different kinds of leaves. Okay, so how about we change with a different color just to see how the look is, just cause to be fun. So I'm gonna wipe off my paint. I'm gonna go into my dirty water. Now I'm gonna go back into my clean water, give it an extra rinsing, taking good care of my stuff. Find a clean, clean part of my paper towel here. I pull. I don't push, I pull. I turn and I pull. None of the color came out, so this brush is clean and ready to go. Okay, so now let's use a different color just because why not? Get another piece of paper. Now if you wanted to, which maybe, you know what, instead of me trying to save like, and trying to like spend all my money here. I'm just gonna go, since this is all practice, I'm just gonna take this and paint on the other side. Recommend you do the same thing when you're practicing. I mean, I'm not gonna save this for anything. That's a cute flower, but you know, we're practicing. Okay, so, now this is all tainted with colors, so I'm just going to Go over here and add it right there, some of my floating medium. 
Let's see, what would look cool? Let's go with blue. Oh, I have a quick thing I want to say here. Don't be doing this to your paint. If you're mixing your paint, do this. This is better for mixing. It, it mixes faster. It's just, it's all around for a million reasons. Just easier, better on the paint. You can do this, do this method. Maybe rotate it, you know. But whatever you do, don't be doing this bit, okay? Just don't, don't shake it. some orange. Why not? Just cut. The awesome things about flowers is you could just kind of make it up and create your own little world. So for this paint, this one, what I'm going to do is roses. At the same time, I'm also going to, I'm also going to add uh, leaves together. Uh, let's see. Only take out what you need. Do not waste your paint. If you need more, you can always add more later. Okay, I'm going to start with my really big one just because. I always like to start with my big brush first. I'm sticking with the angle brush. The angle brush makes it a lot easier to use compared to just doing it with a square brush just because of this little point. You see the brush, how it's kind of pointed? So this makes things way easier. Okay, so I'm going to come in with some orange on the tip and some blue on the base just because I'm going to make my light color the outside of the color this time. Opposite that rose we did, just trying to be different. I'm going to allow the colors to make mix just a little bit and let's do a, little, a rose right here Okay, I'm going to do more on this flower, but I would prefer to allow it to all dry first before I come in again. The reason why is because like I have orange here and I'm going to go back, it's going to blend too much. I do want blending, but not a whole lot of blending. So I'm going to come over here and do some more floating medium. And I'm going to create a new flower while I'm waiting for that one to dry. This one, I like to vary the sizes ever so slightly. It helps with depth. Even though they are the same flowers and really on the same plant, they're kind of roughly the same size. This just helps for a more 3D look.
I blended too much. This is why it's good to practice on paper before we go and actually paint on a surface. Paper's a lot cheaper to mess up on. Okay, I'm gonna fill in those roses a little bit more, but for now, I'm gonna allow it to dry. I was gonna do another little one here. I'm gonna do a little guy. How about we do one that's kind of off? So like we only see part of the flower. So we're only going to do like part of the flower. Okay. I'll let that dry for a minute. I have a lot of caked on paint, so I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm not going to use this brush again. I'm towards the end of my little hangout session. Thanks for hanging out with me today. So it was nice to paint with a buddy, isn't it? So remember, first go into your dirty water. Then go back into your clean water. So that way you get a second rinsing just to take extra special care of those expensive brushes that we bought. You can bend the bristles ever so slightly, but don't over bend, just a little. Now we're going to test it. Yep, test it on a clean part of the paper towel and it's coming out good. Remember, don't push, only pull. Notice how it goes into a nice sharp little edge there with the bristles. That's what we want. Okay, and then he can lay off to the side like... Over here on the side here, you don't see on camera, I just set it down. Like, like I just, you know, just set your stuff down, it's fine. There are little apparatuses and things that you can buy to hold your brushes, but honestly, if there's no turpentine in there, if you just set them sideways, they're fine, especially if you clean them. I mean, it's just water. But if you have, like, pressed particle board, I wouldn't set my brushes on that type of a surface because then you'll mess up your wood. Um, I have a paper. Notice how my background here, I have, um, I'm using a table, it's a plastic table I got at Sam's Club, and then I put paper over it. So if this table gets killed, I'm like, whatever, I bought it on sale. Okay, so I'm just double checking to make sure this brush is all good. I've switched to a smaller one. So I want you to see the difference in sizes here. See the difference? Ever so slightly, but notice how they're both pointy, they're both angular, they're both the same type of brush with the same type of bristles and everything. These are synthetic pretend. They're not human hair, hog hair, or anything. They're just pretend synthetic. It's like a plastic. Okay, so let's see. They, my flowers are still super wet. Super, super wet. So I'm going to give them a minute to dry and I'm going to work on some leaves just while these dry before I go to my second layer. So I have some green, I have my medium, and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow onto this. Don't need a lot, just a little. Now. I'm going to continue to have that, but I'm going to come over here to a clean area and pull some some uh, floating medium out. I'm going to cake my bristles. They don't need a lot. I just, I you know, just, yeah. I just want it so that they're everywhere. I got a slight bend on my brush. 
Yeah. Okay. So now I've got my green and my yellow. A little bit of green, a little bit of yellow. And then I come back here and I blend just a couple times. It doesn't matter how many times you go. Just go until you're happy with what you got. And then, let's see. Let's do a really cool leaf coming off of here. Just like I showed you with the other paper, we're doing the same thing. We're just making the sky a little bit long. I pull out first and then go back in. That's usually the gist of how I do these. So they, I set it down. I set down the brush and then I start with the leaves by pushing out and making an outward bump and then I just continue for however many bumps whatever I'm feeling like or I need some more floating medium when you're going back into your floating medium always make sure that the green and the blue are on the same side so later I don't want to flip my brush and do it again because then it's just going to blend too much over there and then I get it all blendy in the bristles and that's not a good look There's one leaf. Now I'm gonna come over here and make a really cool leaf on this side just because to be different. You can put your leaves and your roses wherever you want. There is no right and wrong answer. The only wrong answer is if you're absolutely miserable right now. That's the wrong answer. This guy is going to be a tad bit bigger just because. Why not? That did not work out as good as I wanted it to. That's okay, I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna show you how to fix the boo-boo. If you have a really bad boo-boo like this one, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. But before, I kinda wanna give it a minute to dry and then I'm gonna go back over it. So, in the meantime, while I'm allowing that to dry, I'm gonna come over here and start a new one. There we go. Okay, this guy is pretty dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix him. Now, because I I do want the guy to be a little bit bigger, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna rework these little bumps here, so he's gonna become a bigger, he's gonna become a bigger leaf. And just like that, we fixed it. That easy. You make a boo-boo, let it dry, and then just paint over it. It'll be our little secret. I won't tell if you'll, you don't tell.
That did not work. There we go. I'm liking it. Very nice. Okay, so where else can we put a cool leaf? Let's put a cool leaf here. All right, I'm liking that. That looks cool. Okay, so I'm going to wipe off my brush. So now I'm going to go and use my small brush. Same thing, same brush, same angle, just as the other one. Here's my three brushes I'm using, so you can see the differences in sizes. So let me see. So big, medium, little. They're all the same thing. They're angled, so they're like a square. Just a little bit of angle. Now let's do the second layer of these flowers. This guy's kind of wet. I started with this one first, so let's work on this guy. Now I'm going to start over here, and since this is a smaller brush, instead of using this big area right here to go back and forth and do it, I'm going to use this, I'm going to make a new smaller brush area. I'm going to load on some, some uh, floating medium here. Let's see, so I want to keep in mind, since I did the blue in the center of the flower and the orange in the end, I want to continue doing the same thing. So I'm going to apply some blue paint on the end, and on the tip, I'm going to put some orange paint. You see that? How I did it? Now once I do that, I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to swoosh them back and forth. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do the same little poofs that I was doing, but smaller. Hmm. Didn't like it, didn't like it. It's okay. Wipe it off. Let's try again. Smaller brushes are harder to work with when loading the paint.
Now let's see. Orange and just a hint of blue. Come over here and mix. And I loaded it wrong. Oh geez, I must be getting tired. I loaded it backwards so when I do it, I'm going to have my blue on the outside. It needs to be the orange because it'll give it a really nice 3D effect. Okay, I'm getting really exhausted, so if you're getting exhausted at this point, it's totally normal. Since I was having boo-boos, I'm going to switch it up and go to a medium-sized brush, see if this will help me. I'm going to load them in with that floater medium. Come in with, okay, the orange on the outside, so the orange on the tip, and then some blue on the base. And I'm going to come over here and rub them back and forth just a couple times. And then I'm going to come in here and do my little swooshies. There we go. Let that be, let that dry for a minute. I'm going to do the same thing. really not covering well the orange and the blue it's gonna need a couple coats to really make that that color pop really need to cake on that paint Yeah, that orange just doesn't want to cover over the blue. I'm so glad I'm working on paper. <laughs> so some brands are good and thick, but I have too much floater medium. And having that, I need the floater medium for the blending. But what's happening now is that it's, it's really the orange just doesn't want to cover up that blue. So that's okay. It's a live and learn experience. So note to self, next time don't do orange and blue together. They don't cover well. The orange doesn't cover well. So if I want to use these colors in the future, I think I'm going to need to buy a different brand. Yeah, different brand. I can go a second time and like how I did it here, I went over twice and you can see that it is covering a little bit better than here. It kind of turned a little bit brown with the blue. So I can go, if I was on a canvas, I would allow this to dry and go and then once it's completely dry, I would go back over it another time to really get that sharp orange in there and then really contrast it with the inner side of the blue. But this is paper and I'm just practicing. So for right now, I'm just kind of kind of let it be what it is just because it's like mostly just it's practice. I don't want to waste all my paint. All right. So that was fun. 
let's paint something else. I got my other, my leaves from earlier. Let's do it again. So I have blue, so how about we just do some blue and white? green. Let's see, what, what else could we cover? We did two different kinds of leaves. We did a clover, we did flowers. Um, let's do a daisy. Now you can do a daisy using, uh, you can do it using, uh, um, uh, a round brush. Um, it's basically the same concept as what the, I'm using the square one. I just happen to have my square one handy dandy right here, so I'm going to show you how to do it with that. But it's pretty much the same. Either or. I think loading a square brush is a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got blue and white over here, and I still have some floating me medium. I'm going to come over here and use this. I don't like to waste paint. I got a nice coating. Okay, so now I'm going to pull. Uh, this whole method is about the pull. So I want the dark color to be what's being dragged behind, and what's coming first in the pull is the white. So I'm going to come in here with some white on the bottom edge, and I'm going to put blue on the outer edge. So that way when I pull... Uh, the white goes and then the blue, they kind of mix together. So here's a daisy. So um, I'm going to work outwards to in. Stamp it down and pull. And they kind of just blend randomly together. I'm not trying to have one side of the petal more than the other. I'm just trying to get both of them to pull together. You get that? They kind of blend as it comes together. Now it's not going to look cool right away. It's every painting has a moment where it's ugly and then you just work it and you work it and eventually it just starts popping. Notice how when I'm doing this, I'm not creating a perfect circle. That's on purpose. 
because it when you make them where they look like they're not super perfect that's when they start looking more like they're found in nature we want a little imperfection when we're doing flowers and then they look a little bit more they'll look more natural maybe like a little bit of bent in there like that one's kind of bent like the wind has kind of pulled it a little bit. Okay. So that's about the concept of that. Now, I can, there are many different flowers and different, you can take it from here and be a straight daisy and work on the middle. You can also, if you wanted to do like a, um, I, I believe they call them dragon, uh, dragon flowers. Um, but they're basically this, and then they're usually orange, and then I could do the same thing of what I'm doing here, but I can um, make them smaller, like more lines, you know, more little, so it, it, it'll start looking more rounded. So I would do the same exact pattern of what I just did here, but I would start doing smaller and smaller ones. I would do a round and then I would go again and I'd make them shorter and shorter and shorter until I get to the middle. And that'll be like a nice little poofy flower. Um, so I did want to do a daisy here. So I'll make sure. That's working. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean my brush. I gotta give this a minute to dry. Dirty water first, and then a dip into the clean, fresh water so you can clean your brush a little extra special. And then wipe to make sure you got all the color off. It's taking a while. This is taking a while to dry. While I'm allowing this to dry, I'm just going to go over here and show you another leaf. Um, just because. Because if I go in here and work with all this area, then it's just going to blend and I'm just going to start getting a green. Which I guess... I always like to dip the brush first into some floating medium. You know what? I already showed you a couple different leaves, and this is just practice. So I want to show you if you're like doing a meadow of flowers, and there's like just random like straw grassy in the in the field in the meadow. You would do what I did here, and then you would just pull. You would do a series of these little guys, of course, with a whole bunch more floating medium. You want to have your paint nice and moist. But you do these little bunches right here, and doing this will create that look of some grass off in the distance. So you can put these on like you're in your flower pot or in a field. And this will really help with dimension and texture, and you know, you could just work it all over the place. And that's a nice little thing to add. Okay, well this stuff is taking a million years to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try to wing it. Just so I can at least show you the, the technique of what's going on here, of what we're doing. So, in a perfect world, allow this to dry. And then come in with your yellow the center just yellow no green and then I like to make it round on the top and kind of on the bottom now if you wanted to 
you could also come in like let's for example let's say this was a sunflower and we uh, were doing it if it was a sunflower I would add some brown into the center of the flower Remember, don't shake your paint, roll your paint. Now, if you wanted to make like a stem, you can go in here. Now you could also do it with green. You could be funky and do pink just cause. And then you would just make your stem like it's coming out here. You could do green mixed also double loaded with some brown. And there we go with the stem. Now let's say this was a sunflower and I did it, I made the leaves a little bit, these petals a little bit wider. Now I'm just going to show you for the inside, I would come in here and then I would just add some dots. Everywhere, wherever, bunch of dots. This is called stippling. And then you could also do patterns in your dots as well. Um, it doesn't look so good with the blue, um, but then like I would want to go back again with the yellow. I'm going to use green just so I don't have to waste more paint and pretend this is yellow and then I would just go back in and make it chunky again and I would go back and forth until I got something cool that I liked with the colors and that's basically a sunflower. So this method is good for all different kinds of things that you're doing. Um, it's basically just changing up the color and how many swooshes you do and it's pretty much the gist of the same thing. So I don't want you to be stressed out and freak out that you can't do it because obviously you've seen that some of my stuff is not amazingly awesome, right? But we're practicing. You know, it takes a few times to get some really cool leaves in there. Like the first one's a dud, you try it again, 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 and eventually you come out with something really cool. So that's what I'm going to challenge you with. I'm going to challenge you to just practice, practice, practice. And when you start getting really cool and you like what you have, then go ahead and put it on some wood or some canvas and just continue. And don't be stressed out that you can't get it your first hundred times. It takes a million times to go over back and forth many times until you get to where it's super cool. So don't stress out. Have a good time. Relax. Remember to breathe. And thank you so much for painting with me today. This was really fun. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Push the purple flower to subscribe and you can watch all kinds of awesome videos.